Jotham, appears prominently in the Hebrew scriptures and is applied to more than one individual. The witnesses rely heavily on the biblical record itself, supplemented by research found in publications like The Insight on the Scriptures, The Watchtower, and Awake. Magazines, as well as study notes in the New World Translation of the Holy Scriptures. There are two primary figures known by the name Jotham. One, Jotham, the youngest son of Judge Gideon, also called Jerubbabel, and, two, Jotham, son of King Uzziah, Azariah, and father of King Ahaz, who reigned over Judah. Each of these individuals played a distinct role in Israel's history, and their life experiences are viewed by Jehovah's Witnesses as instructive examples, whether in moral courage or administrative skill. Jotham the son of Gideon, in the book of Judges, we encounter a period marked by instability and a recurring cycle of Israel drifting into idolatry, suffering oppression, crying out to God, and receiving deliverance through Judges. Jotham, mentioned in Judges chapter 9, was the youngest son of Gideon, the celebrated judge who had delivered Israel from Midianite oppression. After Gideon's death, one of his sons, Abimelech, sought power and killed nearly all of his half-brothers in an act of ruthless ambition. Jotham was the lone survivor of this brutal purge. According to the biblical account, Jotham then stood on Mount Gerizim and delivered a forceful, symbolic parable to the men of Shechem, highlighting the dangers of choosing a tyrant as their king. He used a short allegory involving trees searching for a king among themselves, ultimately settling on the bramble, which underscored the recklessness of Shechem's decision to support Abimelech. Jehovah's Witnesses view Jotham's speech as significant for several reasons. First, it shows that even in a dark period of moral decline, faithfulness and courage could still shine through. Jotham risked his life to offer a public warning, placing trust in Jehovah and divine justice rather than aligning himself with corrupt human schemes. Second, his allegory illustrates a timeless principle. Leaders chosen for selfish or superficial reasons can bring disaster. The witnesses often draw practical lessons from this account such as the importance of looking to Jehovah's standards when selecting leaders or making important decisions, rather than being swayed by ambition or the outward appearance of success. Though the Bible does not recount more of Jotham's personal life after his warning, Jehovah's Witnesses hold that the subsequent downfall of Abimelech and the calamities that befell Shechem fulfill the prophetic message that Jotham delivered. This outcome emphasizes the biblical theme that God's justice, while sometimes delayed, is ultimately certain. Thus, Jotham's short but impactful role in the scriptures serves as a lesson in moral integrity and trust in divine principles. Jotham the king of Judah. The second notable Jotham mentioned is the eleventh king of the southern kingdom of Judah. This Jotham was the son of King Uzziah, also known as Azariah, and ascended the throne after his father was struck with leprosy. His reign is documented in 2 Kings chapter 15 verses 32 to 38 and 2 Chronicles chapter 27 verses 1 to 9. According to the witnesses' research, Jotham's rulership spanned from about 777 to 762 b. C. E., though some chronological adjustments might be discussed in their reference works to align biblical timelines. Jehovah's Witnesses emphasize that Jotham demonstrated a measure of faithfulness to Jehovah. Unlike some other kings of Judah, he did not become corrupt, nor did he fall into the widespread idolatrous practices that were prevalent among God's people at various points in their history. The Bible states that Jotham did what was right in the eyes of Jehovah. 2 Chronicles chapter 27 verse 2. Even though the people themselves still acted corruptly to some extent, Jotham personally set a righteous example. Jehovah's Witnesses consider this a commendable trait and often highlight him as a good king who reflected the positive influence of true worship, despite existing moral challenges around him. Administratively, Jotham is credited with significant building projects that strengthened Judah's infrastructure. He built extensively on the wall of Ophel in Jerusalem and constructed cities, forts, and towers, contributing to stability and prosperity in the kingdom. Jehovah's Witnesses underscore such activities to demonstrate that proper fear of God does not preclude practical governance or civil improvement. Indeed, Jotham's balancing of spiritual integrity with diligent administration resonates with the witness's belief that serving God wholeheartedly should enhance, rather than detract from, responsible and practical decision-making. Another highlight regarding King Jotham's era is that while he remained faithful, the Bible account notes that the people at large did not follow his positive lead. Jehovah's Witnesses often draw lessons from this, namely, that leaders can set a righteous example.
but each individual remains accountable for their own response to divine standards. From their perspective, Jotham's life typifies the principle that the blessings from Jehovah are often closely tied to personal obedience, yet individuals must be willing to benefit from righteous leadership. The end of Jotham's 16-year reign gave way to his son, Ahaz, who turned out to be far less faithful, ushering in a period of decline for Judah. Witnesses point to this succession as another demonstration that each generation must choose faithfulness independently. A righteous father does not guarantee righteous offspring. That said, Jotham's personal record stands as a bright point in Judah's monarchic history, and Jehovah's Witnesses view him as one of the better kings, someone who did not waver or compromise in his devotion to Jehovah. Please share and like and please subscribe.